Welcome to the Prophetic Planning Podcast, where you get prophetic insight and strategy for your business. Have you ever gotten a plan or vision from God, but didn't quite know what to do with it? Prophetic planning gives you divine instruction for the vision that God has given you for your business. As business owners, we're called to do exactly what God has called us to do, and prophetic planning helps us to manage the plans that God has given us. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your glorious right hand. We plead the blood of Jesus over this broadcast, over our technology. We thank you, Father, that you love us enough enough to continue to give us strategy and to give us a word. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place and in this space. We invite you right now um, to dwell among us and inside of us. Give us wisdom, knowledge, and revelation. We welcome the gifts of the prophetic and the spirit of prophecy. May you be ever so present. Lord, allow us in this moment to be able to hear you even more clear than we've ever heard you before. Release kingdom prophetic strategy unto us today. Lord, I even ask right now that you... <clears throat> Soften the hearts and the minds of those that are listening, uh, that those that are underneath the sound of my voice so that they are able to receive the word that you have for them this morning. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. All right, guys, so we are getting ready to get started. Let me let me tell y'all where we are coming from. Like I said, we are on the manage and um, multiply portion of this series. And today we are talking about multiplying the seed part one. Y'all, this had to be a two-part series, okay? Because 2024 is what? Going to be our wealthiest year yet. So we're going to read 2 Corinthians 9, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. That is 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. I love the... um. A New Living Translation version. So that's the version that I am going to read. Please open up your, your phone, your Bible, and let's get this scripture right. All right, let's go. So <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 15 of the New Living Translation says, I really don't need to write to you about the ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem, for I know how eager you are to help. I have been boasting to the churches of Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. But I am sending those brothers to be sure you are really ready. As I have been telling them that your money is all collected. I don't want to be wrong in boasting about you. We would be embarrassed, not to mention your own embarrassment, if some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready at all after all I had told them. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be a willing gift, not one given grudgingly. We're still on, we're on uh, verse six now. Remember this. A farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. Verse 10, for God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and the bread to eat. And in the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. You will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two good things 
come will result from the ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them, to all believers, will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. Thank God for this gift too. Wonderful words. All right, guys. So we just got through from reading 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 15. And that was the New Living Translation. So we are in the Manage to and Multiply series. We're talking about multiplying the seed, part one. Whew, okay. Now, if you guys are familiar uh, with the story, we know that this is Paul. He is talking to the Corinthians. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get into this word. The ministry of giving is one that gets the most slack in the Christian community, right? The question often comes forth to give or not to give, to tithe or not to tithe, to sow or not to sow. How much should I give? What is going to happen to my money? How am I supposed to give if I don't even have enough money to give? Have you ever asked yourself that question? And I understand the confusion and frustrations that you may have as a believer. And even if you have been tithing all of your life or giving all of your life, I pray this word today challenges you to give bigger and to believe give bigger. Because if God told us that this year was going to be our wealthiest year yet, when we manage and multiply, Part of the managing process includes the God multiplication that happens when we give or sow into God's ministries. So I want you guys to put in the comments, uh, God multiplication. I used to be a whole chemical engineer. So God speaks to me in numbers. So we're about to do some math. Okay. We're about to do some math. So I'm about to show you some math. Yes. I'm about to show you what God math looks like in principle. All right. Let's pull out your pens and paper. All right, so this is God math. God math is your money minus your seed equals your money left over plus 100 times your seed. Y'all got that? So your money, the money that you made minus the money that you gave equals your money left over, right? Plus a hundred times your seed. How many of y'all like that math? I like I, I like that math equation. Now, now let's let's talk about that. Let's talk about that math equation. By our earthly standards, y'all, that doesn't even make sense, right? But it is actually a promise from God. Y'all, I didn't just make that number up. You wanna know where I got that from? Genesis 26 and 12, and this is the ESV version. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year. Everybody say same year, a hundredfold. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year, a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. My God. So imagine, let, let's, let's do some more. Let's do some more God math. Okay. Imagine, let's say if you gave above and beyond your 10%. You can have something that looks a little like this. Oh, I didn't give y'all the breakdown. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Let me let me go back so you can understand. Your money minus your C equals your money left over. And I wanted to give you a mathematical representation. I forgot that was on the next slide. So that's, let's say you took $100. You subtracted $10. And like what, what, then you end up having, somehow you got $1,090. Let me understand how you you go from a hundred dollars to a thousand ninety, right? Yeah, that's that that's that one hundred times uh, God math multiplication. All right. So, all right, let's go back. So let's say you give above and beyond, right? That was for ten percent. You saw what happened for ten percent. Now let's talk about what happens if you give fifteen percent. Just by giving five dollars more. You just upped your game from 1090 from $1,090 to 
to $1,585, right? Because the equation is your money. Let's go back. Let me know if you follow me. Your money minus your seed equals your money left over plus 100 times your seed. Y'all, I don't know about y'all, but this right here makes me excited. <laughs> Just if you, if, it's okay. Go back and watch the replay if you like Shadell. I, I don't know. I don't know, but it's okay. You can apply this God math principle. So you following? All right. Thank you, Kayla. Kayla says she following. All right. So your money minus your seed equals your money left over plus a thousand, a hundred times your seed, right? So we talked about you give $10, somehow you end up with $1,090. And all you started out was with $100. I mean, my God. You get $15, <laughs> somehow you end up with $1,500. And all you started out with was $100. Y'all, this right here is God math, right? All right. So y'all, sewing is an automatic supernatural wealth machine. And when the blessing of the Lord is on it, you will see a harvest same year. Let me go back and run that scripture back. This is Bible, Genesis 26 and 12. And Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold. The Lord blessed him. Now, some of you who have committed to being the best Christian you can possibly be are struggling with that concept, okay? Instead of sowing, you would rather save. Or put it away for emergency, right? Because that's the responsible thing to do, especially in your time of need. Now, how many of you have, instead of sowing into a ministry that you sit up under and receive words from and encouragement or people that have, have helped you navigate tough times week in and week out, when faced with an opportunity to give, you chose to pay your bills instead? I'm going to raise my hand because I'm guilty. You ain't, you ain't got to be honest. There was an opportunity for you to sow. You looked in your bank account, right? Okay. Then you looked at what got what you felt like you were supposed to sow. Then you look back in your bank account. Then you start thinking about all your bills. You was like, you know what? Mm, I'm going to pay this bill instead. How many of you have done that? Look, okay. Thank you, Joy, for being. We got at least one. We got two honest people, me and Joy. We're guilty. Okay. So, especially y'all, when we are in our time of need, someone becomes like, like the lowest priority. It's like the thing that we, we actually get rid of. Now, I'm not saying give all your money to the church, but this conversation is for believers only. So I'm having a specific conversation with those of you who profess that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. Those of you who have seen God's mighty power at work in your lives and in your business. Those of you who call on the name of Jesus in your time of need. So yes, you, I'm talking to you. If you do not fit in this, in this, in that, in that perspective or that dynamic, then I'm not talking to you. Y'all, the most annual interest that you can receive in your savings account is less than 6% return. Y'all, I did some research. So you can put money in savings and the most Return that you can receive by letting money sit in your savings is a 6% return. But you know what? Listen, if you are a Christian, right? And you, 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 you met those qualifications. You checked off all those boxes. God has promised you that you can see a 100 fold return on what you sow. So sounds to me that your money works better supernaturally inside of God's money multiplication principle than it does sitting in the bank. Again, this, this, this conversation is from grown believers, mature believers, and those of you who are striving to get there. If this year is going to be your wealthiest year yet, you must multiply your seed. Now let's discuss um, why and how the hundredfold harvest in the same year principle can work for us. In 2 Corinthians 9, Paul writes to the Corinthians about the sowing and giving uh, principle to God's people. He was bo boasting to the churches in Macedonia about the Corinthians' readiness to give and how their enthusiasm had inspired the Macedonians into giving also. He describes giving as a whole ministry. 
For he says, I really don't need to write to you about this ministry of giving for the believers in Jerusalem. So giving is a whole ministry. And for that, y'all, I'm going to have to pause right here for someone. There are about five of you listening to me right now. And you know that God has called you to ministry. But for your personal context, you thought ministry meant launching a church, a women's group, a men's group, preaching or prophesying. You've been struggling to find your fit and your niche in ministry. And honestly, you haven't had much breakthrough in your ministry. That is because your ministry is giving. And God has raised you up to be a financier, a big giver and a funder of the church and other ministry initiatives. His desire is to prosper you in abundance so that you can be the one to cut and sign the checks on his behalf. And once you step into the posture of a giver and a financier, Overflow is about to hit your business. Overflow is about to hit your household. Wealth will flow to you like never before. You were raised to be a financial solutionist. Who's that word for? If that word was for you, I want you right now to repent for not being in alignment with God. We're going to repent. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just repent right now for those of us that were called to be a financier, that we were called to the ministry of giving, and we somehow allow social media, we allow the pressures of the world, we allow what we saw to shape our view of ministry. We thought that that having a ministry meant launching a church or grabbing a microphone or or prophesying or, or doing things that you didn't call us to do. And so, Lord, we step into our role as kingdom financers, for we understand that if a microphone never touches our hands, if we never have a thousand people in our organization, in our ministry, that we have done our purpose on earth by giving. We stand in our authority as one as that is called to the ministry of giving. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That should have just, for some of you, that should have gave you a big sigh of relief. That should have gave you a big sigh of relief. Because if that word is for you, you need to remember, and that's for everyone. Your wealth depends on you managing your assignment well. And we talked about that a few weeks ago. But the only way you can manage your assignment well is if you happen to be in the right assignment. And when God was showing me this, he showed me this. He said, many of you, are sowing wheat seeds in banana fields. That's what I saw. I saw so many of you guys, you you were trying to sow wheat in banana fields. And I was like, God, what does that mean? And when I did some research, right? Producing wheat, right? Looks more profitable, looks faster. Wheat only takes about four months to produce a harvest. And so many of you are going after what looks faster, what you can make right now, what money you can receive right now. You're thinking about, look, I only got a few months. I only got a few months. So I'm going to sow this wheat. But you you're supposed to be you're supposed to be sowing bananas. You're supposed to be planting bananas. But did you know that a banana takes 15 to 18 months for it to bear fruit? So many of you are trying to sow wheat, but you're in a banana field and you're trying to figure out why you are not reaping a harvest. You are out of alignment. God told me to tell you this morning, quit trying to take the easy way out. Quit trying to trying to take the short way out. You will never see a harvest because you are not managing your assignment well. So today, get in alignment. You cannot apply the principle of 2024 is going to be your wealthiest year yet if you are a banana farmer and you try to sow wheat. And that's some of you's mistake. So (laughs) we need to get back (laughs) to the word. You need to sow the right seed for the right assignment. And that's part of your managing and multiplying. Okay, so Paul, back to the word, y'all, back to the word. Paul has been bragging to the Macedonians about how much the Corinthians are faithful to God in their giving. Now, each of us as believers 
we typically are excited to give. It's how God's supernatural money system works. We sow, we reap, we give, we receive. And as a Christian, you don't have to worry about being shortchanged because everything you give, right, will be given back to you. And it says, and if God has blessed you mightily, one of the best and biggest ways God can brag on you and your business is by your ability and willingness to give on his accord. How many of y'all want God bragging on you? How many of y'all want God to be like, yes, I am pleased. I am pleased. Because it says in, 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 in verse two, for I know how eager you are to help. And I have been boasting to the churches in Macedonia that you in Greece were ready to send an offering a year ago. In fact, it was your enthusiasm that stirred up many of the Macedonian believers to begin giving. God wants to brag on you and your business by your ability and your willingness to give on his accord. Your enthusiasm and giving will start a trend of giving and God's people will never lack. Y'all, I don't know how many times I've seen at a church service where giving trains literally start where the word will be so good or someone will really be um, touched by what God is saying to them that they'll go and lay money at the altar. And before you know it, it's so much money at the altar. That's because it was that one person's enthusiasm triggered a whole train of giving. There are some of you that God is calling you to be the first to give so that you can start the giving train. But y'all, unfortunately, that's not how it happens always. Y'all, for some reason, we're excited about giving, maybe even giving a few times. And the moment things start getting tight, one of the first things we cut is our giving. And y'all, Paul, I just love Paul because I feel like Paul, I ain't going to call him petty, but I just imagine Paul is like my uncle that like don't hold nothing back. They're going to tell you when you wrong, right? Because Paul must have known that the Corinthians was about to be up to something, up, up, up to something. He might have known that the Corinthians might have been going through some tough moments because y'all, Paul had to send someone ahead of them to remind them of their promise as believers to give to God's initiatives. And if you want to embarrass God, Call yourself a Christian, a kingdom entrepreneur, a kingdom business owner, a faith-based business owner, and not give or sow generously to God's ministries. We are not here to be an embarrassment to God, claiming him in one area, but not honoring him in our giving. In verses three and four, it says, but I'm sending these brothers to be sure you are really ready as I've been telling them and that your money is all collected. I don't want to be wrong in my boasting about you. We would be embarrassed, not to mention your own embarrassment. If some Macedonian believers came with me and found that you weren't ready after all I had told them. Let me tell you something, y'all. I give every time I step foot into a church. It's embarrassing for me to sit foot into a church. It's embarrassing for me to receive from people, a men and women of God, and not so into them. It's dishonorable to me. And that was something God had to work through me when he started teaching me about honor and the honor system and sowing and reaping. And again, like I mentioned before, y'all, this word is for kingdom business owners. OK, this word isn't for everyone. This word is for Christians. And I know that some of you are getting really challenged by this word because of what might or might not be happening in your bank account right now. How many of you are like, look, you ain't got to answer this. Just just, you know, just check, just reconcile in yourself. Like, OK, she might be talking about me. I might, I might need to get my giving up. But I, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. OK. I, I don't want you to feel embarrassed. I'm, I'm going to tell you my testimony. And I feel like, you know, it's time for me to release my testimony. So y'all, last year, spring and summer, my company, Beyond the Book Media, y'all, we got hit tough. And y'all know I'm transparent on these. I'm talking about tough. I felt the full blow of the economy. And um, Beyond the Book Media, 
our company typically serves other business owners. So if other business owners are going through, that means it would directly affect us. So I felt the full blow of the economy, y'all, as my sales were down by record numbers. I had gone into deep debt, attempting to keep the company afloat. And y'all, I maxed out every single credit card and spent all my savings. And I consider myself pretty generous too. But I also noticed I was struggling to be generous because all of my bank accounts were constantly in the negative. Now, I ain't going to ask you to agree with me on this because you can keep this one to yourself. But if, if you done been down this road, I would love for you to just say, look, me too. Because sometimes we think we're the only one. Y'all, I was getting eaten alive with overdraft fees. No sooner than the money would be deposited, y'all, the overdrawn account would eat it up. And it's in my business account. I found myself not able to tithe as I normally do. There was literally nothing to tithe with. Y'all, there was nothing. <laughs> Any of you ever been in that situation? There was nothing to tithe with. And so I ended up praying, asking God to help me. I said, God, what could I be a kingdom financier? And I had no money to finance nothing. I realized, y'all, I had a money management problem and that I needed to take control of my finances. And after praying to God, God revealed to me that I had stopped tithing and that the devourer was lording over my money because of my sparse tithing. Let me let me run that back to you again. God revealed to me that I had stopped tithing and the devourer was lording over my money. And y'all, let me let me read y'all some scripture in Malachi 3, 10 through 11, English Standard Version, it says, bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house and thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need, I will rebuke the devourer for you. So I will rebuke the devourer for you so they will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Verse 11 again, I will rebuke the devourer for you so that it will not destroy the fruits of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fail to bear, says the Lord of hosts. Now I have to say this, y'all, it wasn't that I was out here balling with my money. It wasn't that I was out here uh, living lavishly. It was literally the, the, the devourer was eating away at my seed. And y'all, so instead of applying God's multiplication principles on my money, I got locked into Satan's subtraction. I got locked into Satan's subtraction. One where I kept on decreasing, no matter how much money I made, it was never enough. I felt like I kept digging into a deeper and deeper and deeper hole. Now, y'all know I like math. So this was what's happening, right? Start out with $100. Don't give nothing. But now you got negative 10. That hurt. I'm starting out with money. I'm not even giving anything. And somehow I got negatives in my bank account. Meaning no matter how much money I made, I had less less. Some of you are trying to figure out where your money is going, why you can't seem to make enough, why you're in a hole. It's because you probably have Satan subtraction on your business bank account. Now, again, I, it wasn't, I, I did not intentionally stop giving. So I need you to understand it wasn't an intentional decision. It was literally, I go check my bank account and wait a minute, there ain't no money to give. I asked God to fix it. Mm -hmm. I asked God to fix it. I said, okay, now something ain't right. And I adopted these two principles. Okay. 
There's two principles. Tithe on everything that comes in, gross and not net. And pay God first. Tithe on everything that comes in gross and not net and pay God first. Now, again, I have negative bank accounts. I have overdrawn accounts. And I'm not talking about overdrawn by life 50. I'm talking about it was, we had some four figure, we had some four figure overdrafts, okay? <laughs> For me to adopt those principles, it required a crazy amount of faith. Why? Because I was already behind on literally everything. <laughs> like, I mean, I wasn't paying God. I wasn't paying tithes. I wasn't paying my bills. Like everything was negative. And we were making money in our business. It just was getting eaten up by Satan's subtraction. And so I figured, look, I ain't got nothing to lose. I'm about to do what God said. So y'all know what I did? I routed all client payments to another bank account. I realized I had a whole nother bank account that I wasn't using. I routed all client payments to another bank account at a whole nother bank. And I paid tithes on those, that income that came in first. Then my money would go into operations. Then my money would go into paying bills. Then my money would go into my household. Mm -hmm. Yep. I didn't care if I didn't have enough money. And I ain't going to lie. Y'all, the first few months I did this, I didn't have enough. Bill collectors was calling me. <laughs> I, we was in the crazy negotiation tactics. But what I did see is that I stopped paying almost, y'all, I was paying about $1,000 in overdraft fees every month. And th that's saying subtraction. Overdraft fees are things that you didn't even spend. And my overdraft balance, my overdrawn account balance, y'all, was decreasing. And y'all, that was a win for me as I began to see God's supernatural math of multiplication principle at play. And since I was sewing in on every dollar, right, I asked God and where and how I should sew for each payout. So it, 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 it I, I was very intentional. How should I sew every time I get some money? And so I have a spreadsheet. Every time a client payment would come in, I would get a deposit. I put that amount in the deposit and it would show me what I needed to distribute. And I would ask God, where, where should this go? So I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you the areas that I sew in. There are three areas that I sew into. I sew into my church, Hunger, Hunger Church Atlanta, here in Atlanta. I sew into uh, Right Direction Church in Columbia. And I sew directly into the men and women of God that pour into me. I'm talking about directly. Like I hit the Apple Pay, I hit the Cash App. And there are certain seeds, like I got a, I got a client that paid me in full. Like I had two, two clients that paid me large lump sums in full. That 10% went directly to them. And then I rinse and repeat. God, what do you want me to do with this? All right, hunger church, right direction. Men and women of God that pour into me, rinse and repeat. Once I got disciplined in my giving, right? So now I'm like giving, uh, it, it's automatic now. I went back to God and I said, you know what? I'm supposed to be the lender and not the borrower. How am I supposed to pay off all this debt I acquired over the past year trying to stay in business? You know, that's when God gave me, again, God math. God gave me his strategy on how to manage my wealth. He told me exactly how much percentages should flow to each area. So he gave me one, two, three, four, five, six different areas. And all of my money, I have a spreadsheet, all of my money, when I don't care if a dollar go in. No, I don't do a dollar. But let's say, let's say $100 goes in. It's going to be split up six different ways. It's going to be some for debt payback, some for savings. Of course, my tithe, owner's pay, tax, and operations. And it got, and it gets distributed. I have, I have separate bank accounts. I have a bank account, debt payback, savings, tithe, owner's pay, tax, and operations. And I started distributing my money. And guess what? I started paying down debt. 
within a month, y'all, I started operating my business from overflow instead of a deficit. Y'all, that was God's multiplication strategy. And I keep telling y'all that 2024 is going to be your wealthiest year yet if you manage and multiply. And now I'm able to sow some amazing seeds and pay down debt as I ask God. Sowing and giving is a wealth producing strategy. It can get you out of debt and it can position you for overflow. So for some of you, you're trying to figure out, well, I can't sow because I owe. And God is saying, if you sow, then you won't owe. God is saying, if you give regularly, then I'm going to multiply you regularly. And so because I want to make sure it's my job to make sure that you have all the information for 2024 to be your wealthiest year yet, you are going to have to learn how to multiply your seeds. And so today we just went through part one of multiply your seeds. And y'all next week, we will tackle part two of multiply your seeds. And so we're going to take um, we're going to take three minutes to seek God and write down what God is saying to us about our business so that this year can be our wealthiest year yet. I'm going to give you a prompt and you're going to pray to God and write down what you see, what you feel, what you hear, what you know. And we believe in this moment that God is speaking directly to us by faith. We do not discount what we are shown. So we're going to ask him, pull out your prophetic journal. If you don't have one, you can get one to God bless the scribe. I'll share that with you a little bit later. I pray that was helpful. Y'all, was that helpful? Was that convicting and helpful? Because I just told y'all all my business and how I got caught up, how to devour Satan. I had Satan's subtraction on my business, but no more. I got God's multiplication. So we're getting ready to do the first prompt. I'm going to pray. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for this word that went forth. Lord, we thank you for showing us your multiplication, your supernatural God math multiplication process, the principle of sowing. And so, Lord, right now, we just ask that uh, you speak to us during this prompt, that you give us what we need. May every gift of prophecy be activated. May the spirit of prophecy flow. May you open up prophetic portals so that we can receive wisdom, knowledge, and foresight. In Jesus' name. So again, we're going to say the prompt. You're going to write down what you believe God is saying to you. Do not discount anything in this moment. Okay? So the first prompt is, God, show me my C multiplication strategy. How much and how often and where should I sow? I'm going to run that again. God, show me my seed multiplication strategy. How often, how much, and where should I sow? Okay. How often, how much, and where should I sow? All right. We're going to take about three minutes. I want you to write it down and then we will come back and get to the next prompt.
All right. All right. Hopefully you had a chance to uh, do the first prompt and then we have one more prompt left. Uh, if you enjoyed today's music, I'm going to drop the link down. It is by Ryan Ruffner. Um, it's the music that we are playing. You can follow him on YouTube. Okay. So we have one more prompt. And then I would love if some of you guys would drop in the comments of what God is sharing with you, or you can go if you feel led to share in our ministry media marketplace, marketplace media ministry. <laughs> Um, Facebook group, we would love to hear from you, but, um, yeah, let me go ahead and get to this next prompt, which is God, what is one wealth producing activity I should accomplish this week? God, what is one wealth producing activity I should accomplish this week? All right. We're going to give you about three minutes and then we'll come on back. All right. All right. Okay. So hopefully you guys had a chance to get your prompt down. If you want to share like a brief summary in the comments, we would love to hear from you. I will share um, briefly my two prompts that I got. So on the first prompt, which was um, God show me my seed multiplication strategy and how often and how much and where should I sow? I got something very simple. The Lord said, daughter, continue sowing um, the way that I've been showing you. Soon I'll have you start giving to charitable organizations monthly. So of course, I've been sowing into the ministries that pour into me, the men and women of God that pour into me directly. And so now um, he said, you know, you're about to, this is you stepping into your, 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 your philanthropic endeavors. I do know that I know, I know for a fact I'm called to be a philanthropist because I definitely um, have a heart to give and I'm very giving. So I am going to be asking God for that. And let's see for the second prompt, um, God, um, which was God, what is one wealth producing activity I should accomplish this week? 
And so this was really interesting what I got. And we might even add this to the Manage and Multiply. Are y'all liking the Manage and Multiply series that we're doing? We haven't really done a series before, but God really, really wanted you guys to get this piece. But what God told me is, y'all, so I'm going to a conference. I'll be at a conference uh, uh, the rest of the week. And he said, you need to connect with a minimum of 20 people and ask me for your people management plan, who you need to co connect with and how to manage the relationships. I'm about to give you favor with men this week and women, of course, come rested, be ready to be used by me. You are indeed a marketplace prophet. And so, uh, so now he has told me in advance, like, like just be ready, be ready to connect we uh people this week i think sometimes we um sometimes we will go places and and we're not totally um and we're not totally managing like our presence in that place managing our presence in that place i know so for me i'm going to give you just a brief example uh, of how God uses me every time I go to a service provider. So like, even though the people are serving me, I serve back to them. So for example, when I go get my hair done, I'm talking to my hairstylist. I'm, I'm, I'm dropping wisdom and knowledge. When I go get my massages, we be in there talking about Jesus, the Lord prophecy, dreaming. When I'm getting my eyelashes done, like I pour back into those who serve me. And so I realized that that was something that God, God will send me to certain service providers, um, especially when I go get a massage. It'd be something about them massages, y'all. I'd be real prophetic. So um, that that was something that I know that God has me to manage from like a people management and managing your presence. We might add that to the series, but I know that God wants me to manage myself <laughs> and my presence. And apparently that's a, that's a wealth producing activity. So I want you to think about how, how God is, um, when he sends you places, how are you showing up? Are you looking like his kingdom representative? Are you making yourself available? Are you willing to talk to the people? Because let me tell you something, you might step into a room and that, that, that relationship might be your next investor. Actually, one of my investors in her beauty regimen, I met them on clubhouse, right? So just make sure that you are managing your presence with people. So um, let me see some of these comments. And of course, if this word blessed you, you can consider supporting us so that we can continue bringing you content like this weekly. You can support us by giving directly to our cash app at dollar sign kingdom business net. And again, y'all, this is not a word to manipulate you into giving it KBN. I promise you, this is a word because I need all of y'all to be having God multiplication. I need y'all to have God math on your wealth that you are producing this year, because that's how God's going to multiply it. And so let's see, I did get some comments. Uh, I was asked to convict, to repeat the six places that, uh, that God told me how to manage. We're going to talk about this. We're going to go more into debt. I said debt in depth. <laughs> we're going to, we're going to cover this a lot more deeply in next week in the, uh, manage, uh, manage and multiply your seed next week, but the six areas were debt payback, savings, tithes, owner's pay, taxes, and operations. So I had to split my money and he gave me percentages um, and I had bank accounts for each one. So that was an area that I was able to do that. So hopefully that answered your question. And then um, someone says, Prophet Chanel, you were all that in the bag of chips. LOL, many people gave good ideas over my journey. Yahweh gets all the glory for what he did. Amen. Um, but like the lepers that went back and said, thank you, your encouragement and when and wisdom blessed me. And yes, I'll be sewing it to your ministry. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So Michelle says she heard to sew into a college student weekly. That's good. Anybody else get anything from like a sewing perspective on, um, you know, what God is telling you and how God is telling you to sew. And, and again, y'all, I'm only sharing what I know, what I know God said for me to share. And so if this convicted you, y'all do not delay. If it didn't convict you, then I wasn't talking to you. But for those that have said that 2024, you're under the word that 2024 is going to be your wealthiest year yet. Make sure that you are following those principles. And so far we've talked about 
um, in the whole series. Let me tell y'all what we've talked about so we can know what we're managing and multiplying. We've talked about managing your assignment, so being obedient, managing your planning, so actually planning out what you're going to do and sticking with the plan, planning for success, multiplying your seed, part one, and we're going to have multiplying your seed, part two, right? And then we have multiplying your fruit. So we have a lot in this Manage and Multiply series that we're going to cover until the Lord says, y'all got it. Amen. <laughs> You said that's an entire book. Look, you know what, Joy? I thought that. I was like, God, this is getting kind of long, ain't it? <laughs> this is this is kind of long, getting kind of long. So, um, all right. So Patricia says, so and to the women who labor in the Lord. Amen. And I, I can't see you. It doesn't have your name on here. Um, sharing what I got for the first prompt. So where you're growing, so where you're going, start sowing again, beyond the 10%. Fear of lack and poverty mindset is keeping you from doing what I called you to do to finance my movement in the kingdom. Stop holding on to money. Like I cannot give you more. I'm going to tell y'all a quick testimony. Then we're going to end because we're at nine o'clock. But um, every year, we go to, uh, I don't know if Lindsay's on here, but every year we go to this conference at Right Direction. It's like, it's a faith conference. And every year they ask us, it's called a direction, direction conference. I think that's what it's called. Hopefully I'm not butchering it up, but um, it's the, the and, and if you guys aren't familiar, uh, Right Direction is a pastor Chandler's church that he's the assistant pastor. So we go to this conference every year and it's such a phenomenal conference. It really activates your faith and propels you. It's just everything. So for the past three years that I've been going, I've been able to sow a minimum of a thousand dollars seed. Y'all, the first year I went, I sold like $3,000. I sold, I sold more than $3,000. I gave like a thousand dollars every night. So going into Y'all, this last November, I told y'all, man, I got here pretty rough, y'all. I was talking about rough, 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 rough riders up in here. Uh, the last conference, I I thought I probably had a negative in my bank account, chair going down there. What, what, I probably had some negative in one of my bank accounts, but I knew I needed to sow. And me and Lindsay, we were both talking. And I, and I heard the Lord say, y'all, before y'all leave, y'all are going to have the $1,000 to sow. And I'm going to tell you why God said that, because I asked him. I went back to God and I said, God, I'm not trying to be an embarrassment. Remember we talked about being an embarrassment? So I'm not trying to be an embarrassment. I can't. Every, I've been able to sow a minimum of a thousand every time I've stepped foot into this church, you know, for this conference. I said, please don't allow me to be an embarrassment. Can you increase me so that I can sow this thousand dollars? Because I got to, I got to give this. And before you know it, before the last day, I think by day two, uh, I got somebody paid a bill or I got a deposit. But y'all, I had the thousand dollars to give. And yes, I'm pretty sure there were about 50 other thousand bills I could have paid, but I made sure because I asked God specifically for the thousand so that I could sow into the ministry because I didn't want to be an embarrassment because I feel like I come, I need to come with some, with bringing gifts, right? Bringing seeds. I was able to sow and I actually ended up being able to sow more, give more than that. But I want to encourage you guys to ask God to increase you. If there's an area or a ministry that you want to sow a certain amount to, ask God, he'll give it to you because, you know, he loves to brag on you. God wants to brag on you. So um, anyways, hopefully that helped. And Joy, you said just the six um, categories could be a whole book. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I pray that um, this manage and multiply your seed uh, blessed you. Part one blessed you because we about to have God's multiplication strategy. I don't know anything that you can sow into. And the Lord says that he will bless you and uh, give you a uh, hundred fold on what you've sown. And so we know that 2024 now, now you guys are seeing how 2024 can be your wealthiest year yet because we got God multiplication on our seed. So I'm going to pray you guys out and thank y'all so much. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you just for um, giving us this word. Lord, I ask that um, what you revealed to us on how we can sow, where we're supposed to sow, the frequency we're supposed to sow, that you increase us 
us in abundance so that we are able to sow, Lord, stretch our faith so that we are able to sow. Even in those of us who, who stop uh, tithing and sowing and giving regularly, Lord, please put a fire under us so that we can uh, tap into your God math. Lord, we just rebuke Satan's subtraction off of our bank accounts, off of our businesses, off of our ministries, off of our nonprofits, off of our households. We rebuke Satan's subtraction right now. We rebuke the devourer right now off of our finances finances, our money, our wealth, our influence, and everything that you have called for us to have. And we thank you, Lord, that you are multiplying everything that you have blessed. And for it is in your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. And so I do want to add, if you enjoy prophetic planning, please consider adding a session to your next conference, event, VIP day, or small group. You can reach out to us at community at kbn.club for booking info. All right, guys, I will see you guys back here next Tuesday with another prophetic planning. I pray that you guys have a wonderful day. This episode of Prophetic Planet was brought to you by Kingdom Business Network Healthcare. Hey, entrepreneurs, ever worried about finding affordable healthcare while building your dream? Kingdom Business Network has your back. Introducing KBN Healthcare, quality health plans for you and your business, big or small. Nationwide coverage, extensive doctor networks, all at your fingertips. Visit kbnhealthcare.com today and join the community where your health and wealth grow together. Kingdom Business Network Healthcare, caring for you as you build your brand.